Hello and welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel. Yeah, in this episode, which will have actually two parts, we are going to build up a mini Windows 98 retro PC out of this SPC or also single board computer. Yeah, a single board computer is nothing more than a PCB in a form factor of a standard ISA card, which is equipped with all needed parts and interfaces to set up a full working PC. SPCs are mostly used in industrial applications, they have a higher reliability and are providing some more functions than a common main port for a home user. For the second part of our video, we will connect the world's smallest color CRT from the 80s to this SPC. I would like to check how good the image quality is and if we are able to play some nice retro games on this 1.5 inch color CRT. So, then let's build up the setup and check some technical specifications. CPU Galaxy. Yeah, then let's have a closer look at our single board computer here. It was actually manufactured by Jumptech and unfortunately I was not able to find any nice information in the internet. So we have to figure out by ourselves where to connect which device. So here we can clearly see the bus connector. So a SPC get normally connected to a baseboard, which has just a power connector and a couple of bus connectors to add other card. Yeah, this is an extended ISA bus connector. This bus standard was made by Compaq uh, back in the days as an opponent to the IBM PS2 MCA bus. The extended ISA bus extends the ISA bus from 16 to 32 bit and this gave the possibility to address 4 GB of memory instead of 2. This bus was also backwards compatible to XD cards and therefore it was very popular back in the days. And if we compare it here with another SPC, you can clearly see here we have a standard 16 bit ISA connector and this extended ISA connector has several pins more and also here some gaps which is a completely different socket. Yeah, over here we have obviously a power connection. So single board computers get usually supplied through the bus with all the needed voltages, but the older ones, they still have a separate power connection on the board. And usually they just need five volts for supply. What else do we have? Over here we have the IDE connector, a floppy connector, two parallel ports and um, additional four serial ports. Also nice, we have here also a 44-pin IDE connection, so you can connect here directly a, a laptop hard drive, hard drive. What else do we have over here? The PS2 connectors for mouse and keyboard. We have a USB connector, a LAN connector, and a standard VGA connector. On this side, we have one socket available for standard SD RAM. Yeah, so then let's have a closer look at the components on the board. So obviously here under the heatsink we have the CPU. So this is a mobile Pentium 1 266 MHz MMX CPU directly soldered to the PCB and the heatsink is glued directly on the CPU. So unfortunately we cannot see the CPU here. Here we have the Aladdin chipset. And here we have definitely the reason why I choose this single board computer for a Windows 98 build. This is very uncommon that a single board computer has a sound support. And here we have the ESS 1938S sound chip, which is actually very nice and also OPL3 compatible. So what else do we have here? Here we have also this Dallas RTC chip. I changed it already and put it on a socket because the battery was already empty. What else do we have here? So nothing more to say. Of course, I told already we have a LAN connector here. And yeah, here is the, the graphic chip. It's a Chips M69000. Uh, uh, it's also a, a, a mobile video chip. And we have two megabytes of video memory available on this board. To give you an idea how the CPU looks like underneath the heatsink, here we have a completely new unsoldered uh, Pentium uh, 1 mobile CPU. So it comes uh, on a very thin film here. You can see here we have nicely the lead frame where it gets soldered and in the middle the silicon die. So a very nice piece of my collection. Here we have a module out of a laptop. So 
uh, in this case the, 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 the heatsink was fixed with some screws so I could remove it to show you how it looks like when it's soldered. So here you can see this very thin film material and here the solder pins. Yeah, so then let's check our power connector. So as I mentioned already, we just need to supply here 5 volts. So we need to figure out where we have our ground connection and our 5 volt connection. So underneath we can see here already nicely that the first two pins are here connected to the ground plane. So I assume that these two pins are our ground connection. The other ones we definitely have to check. How we are going to check this? At the end it's easy, we just need a normal multimeter and we use the ground connection of uh, the USB port and we try to figure out where we have the ground connection. So this pin we can see already um, it's ground and also the first one. So the first two pins are definitely our ground connection. For the 5 volt connection it's also easy, um, you just measure on the on the USB port, um, here we have the five volt at uh, the ground, and here we have the five volt connection. So you, we're just going to measure from USB to here. So this is ground we set already, and the third one is definitely our five volt connection, and it's also in parallel to the fourth pin. So we have also third and fourth pin in parallel. So easy, and the last one it does not have. Uh, any connection to somewhere, so it's just, yeah, for nothing. We just need ground and 5 volt here. To connect it uh, nicely, I soldered already a nice adapter to connect it to the power supply of the computer, and here with some pins to fix it uh, nicely uh, on these connectors. So, supply done. Yeah, and the last thing we need to figure out was the, the connection for the speakers. So after checking the, the specification and the pinout of the, of the sound chip, it was easy for me to find out that this connector here goes, is connected directly to our sound chip here. So I found out that we have the first is the, the, the left channel, then the ground pin, and then the right channel. So I had to assemble also some, some adapter cables where we can connect at the end speakers. Yeah, now we are almost ready to go. Yeah, what else do we need here for our setup? Of course we need some RAM, so I will go for 256 megabytes. This is more than enough for our Windows 98 build. Of course, uh, this is a way overrated because we have only 66 MHz front side bus, so of course it's down clocked at the end. We also need a kind of, of hard disk drive, so um, because we are building up a mini Windows 98 system, I will go for this uh, IDE to compact flash adapter, so this gives you the possibility to use a common compact flash card as a standard hard, hard disk drive. But because we are retro lovers, we will not use a standard compact flash card. I would like to have a real hard disk drive, so I choose this 4 GB IBM micro drive. So this is actually a real uh, hard disk with all the mechanical parts inside, you know, from bigger hard disk drives. So this will be at the end a real retro feeling and I'm curious how this uh, IBM micro drive will perform with Windows 98. How does this look inside? So I disassembled one and yeah, I put it in some resin and you can clearly see here nicely the, the, the disc, the head and all the other mechanical stuff. Actually this kind of micro drives compared to a, a common compact flash card uh, kind of raw on eBay and also very expensive. So uh, yeah, if you if you check for this, you can you can expect about fifty dollars or something like that. Maybe you're lucky and you get it for a bit cheaper.
everything is set up nicely now. So I used some alligator clips to connect the speakers. I also connected the floppy drive because we need to start up with the Windows start disk. Um, for the installation of Windows 98, I put the installation files already on the on the micro drive um, with my PC, so I don't need a, a CD-ROM right now for installing. For all the other drivers and software I need, I put everything on a USB drive because we have a nice USB connection available. Yeah, it's time to switch on our setup here. And yeah, everything is running, so you can barely hear the hard disk, it's so small that you cannot even hear the heads and the discs. Yeah, and here we have our post screen. Let's enter quickly the setup. So here we have a standard Phoenix BIOS. Our floppy drive is set here, nicely recognized our 4 GB IBM drive. So everything quite fine so far, nothing special to check. Maybe uh, the, the boot priority. So first we have our removable devices to boot up with our Windows 98 floppy, then hard drive, perfect. So then let's give it a try and boot up with our Windows 98 floppy. So then let's go for the setup of Windows 98. I put already uh, the files for the installation directly on the micro drive. And we can start here the setup. Yeah, the installation of Windows was just straightforward. I had no blue screen or any issues. The drivers for the ES sound chip and the M69000 graphic chips I found easily for download in the internet. All drivers were detected nicely. The only thing I recognized was that the IBM micro drive is a bit slower than normal drive, which was pulling down the performance just a little bit. The software installation is done now and I also installed the Windows 98 service pack, which obviously changed the Windows start screen. This is the first time I see this and it looks a kind of Windows XP. The system is booting nicely and I'm looking forward to test it a little bit. So then <clears throat> let's check out maybe CPU set to get the specification of the CPU nicely. So it took me a while to find out which version is working on, on, on Windows 98 nicely. So this is a version 1.76 from April 2016, so this version of CPU set is working quite fine on Windows 98. So at the CPU we can see her Intel Mobile Pentium MMX, as I told you already, on 250 nanometer technology, yeah, 267 MHz it's showing here. What else do we have? Here we have our 32 kilobytes of first level cache. Here it's recognizing the Aladdin 5 chipset on this mainboard. Then what else? Graphics, yeah, it's chips and technology. 96, 69,000 PCI. So uh, everything working. Another software I have here, it's called Test CPU. Uh, also a nice uh, program for testing older CPUs. It's showing also some nice details. You can see here which features are available on your CPU. And here we can see MMX technology available. Yeah, so basically our system here has just two megabytes of video memory. So uh, we don't have any 3D acceleration. And with these two megabytes of video memory, we are somehow limited with possibilities for games. But nevertheless, some easy games make also fun playing on Windows 98. This is one of my favorite games in between. It's just easy, not that sophisticating, and yeah, it makes fun. I 
yeah, so then let's try also something else. I'm prepared already the DOS mode, so we are going to start now uh, Windows 98 in DOS mode. Everything is set up already nicely for our Sound Blaster support. And yeah, let's check out some DOS games. So Windows 98 is now starting in MS-DOS. So if you want to get rid of this MS-DOS mode in front of your prompt, just type prompt dollar dollar p dollar g then it's a way and you just have your usual uh, command prompt here so let's try doom yeah it's running nicely as expected with the cpu of 266 megahertz it's running for sure on a full frame rate of 35. So Duke Nukem 3D is also running very good with full 800 by 600 resolution. This is actually a nice retro DOS game you can play on this computer without any limitations. Yeah, Quake is with 640x480 also playable, but you don't get a full frame rate for smooth playing. With lower details and resolution, it is of course very smooth. Yeah, at 3D Bench we get here a score of 141. PC Player shows up with 19.9 .9 points, and Norton Swiss Info gives us a rating of 907. At the end, we got here a very nice, sweet little Windows 98 setup with a proper CPU and a nice little hard drive. So stay tuned for the next part of this episode where we are going to have also the smallest color CRT connected to this single port computer. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.